So let's review the different types of discontinuities. In the first case, we have a removable discontinuity, which just means the limit at your point's going to exist. It's just probably not defined at all or not defined at the point that best fits. So you could fix this, fix meaning make the thing entirely continuous by just moving your point down to here. Second case, jump discontinuity. We may not be able to fix it, but at least we can get a handle on how bad things are in that there's gonna be a limit on each side and it's just gonna be that this limit is not gonna match up. So that's our jump discontinuity. And you notice, you stay to one side, the limits are just fine. It's just that you can't get a two-sided limit. So we would go to a third case where we have these vertical asymptotes. So to get a handle on this, we're gonna to wanna to have a notion of an infinite limit. So in this case, if you notice, well, there's not gonna be a best fitting point here, but we can definitely describe the behavior in that what's happening. Near a vertical asymptote, your values are shooting up, but they're really not doing anything crazy. They're going either straight up, straight down, but there's nothing wild happening. Let's take a look at the function f of x equal to x minus two over x minus three. Here, we're gonna have a vertical asymptote at x equal to three. And if you notice, as I come in to three from the right, our y values are gonna keep getting larger without bound. As I come into three from the left, our y values are gonna get more negative and large without bound. So the way I would write this is, okay, limit of f, x goes from three from the right, plus infinity, limit, x goes from three from the left of f is minus infinity. So really all we're doing is, as usual, with the limit, we're keeping track of where the y values are going. Now since these don't match up, if I want to take the full limit on both sides, then we're gonna to have to go with does not exist again. So what's the idea here? This is just extra notation where a limit may not exist in the strict sense of the word. We can say something if the behavior is regular. Okay. For an example of where the two-sided limit would exist in this case, let's try f of x equal to one over x minus three squared. So our graph is gonna look like this. We have the vertical asymptote at three. And you'll notice in this case, as we check each side, we're gonna be going up to infinity in both directions. So I come in from the right, and as I come in from the left. So in this case, the two-sided limit exists, and so I just say the limit x going to three of f is plus infinity. I want a delta epsilon type definition for a limit that goes off to say plus infinity, I'm gonna have this. For all n bigger than zero, there exists a delta bigger than zero, such that if x is not equal to x zero, and the distance between x and x zero is less than delta, then f of x has to be bigger than n. So let's think about what happened here. In the y before, what I had was, I had my limit, and we took a neighborhood of basically width on each side epsilon. Here, our point is infinity. So the idea is if I want some neighborhood, say of some epsilon, well, what's gonna happen? This is infinity, so if you think about it, there's nothing above it. And below it, what's happening? If these numbers get closer and closer to infinity, that just means we're taking numbers that are getting larger and larger and larger. So where our test is really gonna be is this. Somebody's gonna hand you a very large number n, and what our test says, I have to find an interval around x zero, such that when I apply f to it, this interval gets squeezed into this interval. Well, to be squeezed into this interval just says, I just have to have all my values coming in here under f bigger than this large number n. So what's happening here is consistent with the way we defined limits before with the delta epsilon. It's just tweaked because infinity is not a real point. Okay, and then what we have over here in the graph is, as I squeeze in, say x zero, and we're just gonna do it one side so the picture looks good. So I get this smaller and smaller and smaller. What's happening is our points are getting pushed up higher and higher and higher. And if I consider infinity as a point to make the picture look nicer, that's just saying these things are gonna close in on this guy. So definitely consistent with what we've done before. All right. Let's take a look at some rules for dealing with rational functions. 
So if I have my rational function p of x over q of x, I want to know how do I find the vertical asymptotes to go with this, and how do I decide whether I'm looking at plus infinity or minus infinity when I do the one-sided. Okay, first thing you have to do, you have to note where your denominator is going to be equal to zero before you do anything. Then I'm going to do our cancellation with anything that factors out of the top. What's going to happen? If things fully cancel out, there are going to be removable discontinuities, meaning there's going to be a limit and we can plug it in with a point. If there's something left over in the denominator after you do all your cancellation, that's going to be where your vertical asymptotes are to decide what to do with plus or minus infinity for the one-sided limits, what do you have to do? You mark off where all your vertical asymptotes and all your zeros are, so the zeros are going to be what's left over in the top. And then what you do is you check one point in each region to get the sign. So let's look at the example f of x equal to x minus 3x minus 2 over x squared x minus 2. We take the bottom, that's our q of x, where is that zero? That's going to be zero at zero and two. So those are going to be our discontinuities by our old rule for discontinuities of a rational function. We note the x minus twos are going to cancel out. So we have a removable discontinuity at x equals two. If you want to fix that to make it continuous, just note if I put two in here, that's going to give me minus a quarter and that's what I should let my function be equal to. That would also be equal to the limit. Then note at zero, that's not going to go away. Okay, we'll be dividing by zero there. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. All right, so I want to know what's happening with the limits on each side of my vertical asymptote here. What do we do? We're going to chop up our interval or a real line. We have a zero at three, and we have a vertical asymptote at zero. So I'm going to want to know what's happening on each of these three regions. So. On this region here, I just need to check one point. So if I'm on this side of zero, I can check minus one. If I put minus one in there, I'm gonna get a minus four. So it's gonna be negative on this entire region on this side. So that's gonna give me, if I'm on this side, well, if all of these are negative and we know that thing's going to either plus or minus infinity, it has to go to minus infinity. So the one-sided limit on this side is minus infinity. We go to the other side. If I'm on this side is zero and I want to stay less than three, let's go with one. So f of one is going to give me one minus three, gives me minus two over one squared, gives me a minus two. So we're negative when I'm in this region. Again, same reasoning. We know the limit's going to either plus or minus infinity. If they're all negative y values, it has to go to minus infinity. So the one-sided limit on this side is minus infinity also. Okay, that's our answer. The limit as x goes to zero of f is going to be minus infinity. And note, if it split, one going to plus infinity, one going to minus infinity, then I'd have to give you two answers to make sense of what's going on. All right, now I can check on this side what's going on when I get past three. So we can put a four in there and we'll see that it's positive, but that's far enough away from the vertical asymptote that I don't need to worry about what's going on in this case. If I had several vertical asymptotes, you want to make sure you keep track of the zeros.